Okay, guys, it goes without saying, Spider-Man, one of the greatest superheroes in my lifetime. I got to thinking to myself, who is Spider-Man's ultimate nemesis? Who is the ultimate villain out of all the villains that Spider-Man has fought, encountered, uh, that we've read about? Who is that ultimate villain? Without further ado, here is my take on it. Let's see what you think. In the honorable mention category, the villains that just never quite stacked up, in my opinion. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is Kurt Connors, the lizard, right? I mean, what hubris to think that you're just going to take this experimental serum and it's going to regenerate your limbs because you lost a limb and you just can't have it, right? You ain't having it. So you take this serum and we all know what happens, right? Well. He's, you know, for a doctor, you're not all that smart, first of all. And second of all, the stories that the lizard is in, he's, he comes off more like a two-bit uh, crook at times. I, I did enjoy what McFarlane did with the character, but it just wasn't enough to, re to rescue the lizard in terms of his place, in my opinion, in Spider-Man lore. Electro. I actually loved Electro. Um, especially early on. I love the costume. It, it totally befit the whole electricity, power of electricity and channeling it. The Romita and Ross Andrew era, classic. Um, just phenomenal. But then there was the movie, right? And I can't get that image out of my mind of what they did to Electro. And of course, here's Jamie Foxx as Electro. How is this Electro? Um, just kind of ruined it for me. Uh, some of you maybe thought this was phenomenal. I just, I didn't see it. Which takes us to the Sandman. Kind of cool, right? Turn into sand, but really, nothing really more than a thug who, you know, kind of plays second fiddle to most of the more intelligent and cunning villains. And for that reason, he's on the honorable mention list. I think I'm going to part company with a lot of people on this one. Venom. I mean, he's huge in the Marvel Universe, but to me, really, you know, he's made his living on the back of Spider-Man, literally. You know, this symbiote, this costume that later becomes this character that makes it in the movies and countless books, but I don't know, you know, creepy, scary, sure. Uh, you know, where's the depth? Where's the, the intrigue? I, I'm not feeling it. That's just me. Which leads us to the Vulture, Adrian Toomes. Supposedly the scientist who comes up with this mechanical harness and suddenly he's on par with Spider-Man, able to fight him in the bu between buildings. I get that, but you know, at the end of the day, the Vulture always loses and uh, always ends up needing to go up to the heights and open areas to have any chance of winning, and I just never found him to be anything more than an old crass kind of complaining character I did not like what they did with him in the 90s and the ultimate run and there you have it that's our you know honorable mention category villains that have made their way into countless stories but never quite to me got over the hump to be a contender and here we are the contenders so with that said clearly Dr. Octopus Otto Octavius Here's a guy I did buy. I mean, I bought the whole mechanical arms, lethality, um, insanity, and, you know, he always gives Spider-Man a run for his money. Um, to me, he's right up there. He's right up there as one of the top villains. Could be the ultimate villain. He's not the villain I chose, but there were so many great stories. Uh, the relationship with Aunt May, and, you know, they did a pretty good job of it uh, in the movies with him as well. I thought they portrayed the character quite well. Dr. Octopus is clearly a contender. That takes me to the Kingpin. The Kingpin of Crime. You know, I was never a huge fan of the Kingpin. Never looked forward to the stories, but I can't say that I didn't buy into the character. I can't say that he wasn't interesting. He certainly caused a lot of havoc in Spider-Man's life. I actually feel that the first time I enjoyed or appreciated the character was when I watched Daredevil and Vincent D'Onofrio's uh, portrayal 
of the Kingpin in that series. I thought he brought a complexity to the character, a soft side. I just th I just think they really did a great job explaining the character. Morbius, one of my favorites. Uh, certainly a contender, conflicted, uh, deadly, also had a sense of good. Now, while Morbius falls into the villain category, you could also claim he's an anti-hero, right? Uh, Gil Kane's work on Morbius, classic. I think that's the best Morbius work to date. Um, certainly a contender, but also a character with a redeeming quality, so therefore he does not fall under the ultimate nemesis uh, category. Which then brings us to the ultimate nemesis. Who could it be? Well, of course, the Green Goblin. Norman Osborn, Harry Osborn. You know, is there any doubt? Maniacal, insane, capable of doing horrific things. Had a major impact in Peter's life. William Defoe's portrayal in the movie uh, did it justice. Not only, you know, I think maybe even kicked it up a notch. It was phenomenal. Didn't, wasn't quite a fan of the suit, but, you know, I got over that. The Green Goblin is Spider-Man's ultimate nemesis. Which brings us to the end of the video. Um, certainly, it's been a lot of fun. I love sharing these thoughts with you guys. If you have any thoughts of your own, I'd love to hear them. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll be back soon. Thanks for watching.